Okay, a uh, couple things. I just want to read this from the book. I think it's well put in here about being graceful. Uh, servers must positively never gaze about, smile at one another, lounge in their seats, cross their legs, meaning when you're seated over at the side, or manifest in any other way levity and irreverence in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. Their movements must be slow and dignified, yet not proud or affected. Affected means put on, means exaggerated. Uh, so it's, it's slow, dignified, reverent, but yet not cocky or proud or affected. Uh, never should they walk backwards or sideways from place to place, uh, but should turn about and proceed forward to the desired place. It is unbecoming for servers to raise their cassocks so high that one can see their legs, for example, when about to kneel on the altar step. Okay, so we went through that, and we also talked about um, acting together with the other server when you're serving with another server. We should see, we should see the servers rise and genuflect in one movement, in unison. Next I want to talk about your hands. First of all, folding the hands. When you fold your hands, you want to have your fingers together this way, but also your palms together this way. So sometimes we see servers with the palms apart like that. You want to keep your palms together and your fingers together this way, no space in between the fingers. Then with your thumbs, you put your left thumb down, you cross the right thumb on top of the left. You hold your hands against your breast, pointed upward. They shouldn't be too low. They shouldn't be too high where they're up into your chin or your face. So this is how I'm going to look with my hands at my breast, pointed upwards to God, right thumb over the left, fingers together, hands together. When you're not doing anything with your hands, that is the position to keep your hands in all the time. Your hands are always in that position until it's time to do something with your hands. Now, while one hand is occupied, such as holding the cruet, I'll hold the cruet in my left hand. The right hand is over my, actually, most of the time you're holding your cruet in your right hand. But take that back. But your other hand is, is flat on your chest, like this. And then as soon as the priest takes the cruet, then I'm going to fold my hands. And when he returns it, I'll put out my right hand. So that's one hand being occupied. The, uh, another thing about the hands is we'll go into making the sign of the cross. Um, the, the large sign of the cross, when you make the sign of the cross in one smooth movement, you're going to put your left hand, fingers together, flat towards the bottom of your breast, which means you look like your breastbone, where that is, like right under that, not all the way down on your stomach, but right at the bottom of your breast. And with your right hand, fingers together, you'll touch your forehead as you say the words on the forehead, the breast right above your, your other hand, and then left shoulder, right shoulder. Now one thing you want to be careful when you move from the right shoulder to the left shoulder is not to have your elbow out. Your elbows always stay close to the body. Sometimes we see servers do this and you know it looks disedifying from behind. So you, you make the sign of the cross by keeping that right elbow close to the body. All right, so it's going to be in nomine patri, et fidi, et spiritus sancti, amen. And as you say, Amen, or English, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen, then you fold your hands again. Don't, some people have this practice of making the sign of the cross and then touching their breast again afterwards. Any little practices like that, um, that one does personally, don't bring them into the church, into the sanctuary. When you're serving, you should follow the rubrics of serving, and that would be, some, some have a little thing of like they make a little sign of the cross and they kiss their thumb and their finger crossed, like a little cross. I don't have any objection to that if it's on one's own piety, but not in the sanctuary, not when you're serving, because we should follow the, the church um, rubrics. So, making the sign of the cross, again, I'll just do it one more time, one smooth movement, in nomine Patris, et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. And the other sign of the cross is the little sign of the cross at the Gospel, which is forehead, lips, and breast. And that is made with the four fingers stretched out straight, like this, together again, not, not spread out. And with your thumb, the flesh part of the thumb, not the nail side, but the flesh part, you'll make the small sign of the cross on your forehead, which means just a small sign of the cross, forehead, lips, and breast, and then you fold your hands. 
Uh, this is an area where we see a lot of servers making, you know, little all over the place, uh, making big movements. There's, there are three tiny little crosses. And the cross, by the way, for the Latin rite is what we call the Greek cross, which means that the two arms of the cross should be equal length, meaning up and down. You know, a, a Latin cross would be like this, where the, the arm of the cross or the cross beam is up towards the top. But a Greek cross, all four parts that come out from the middle are the same length. So that, that would be how you would make this little sign of the cross. And again, it should be little, not these big sweeping movements. And again, left hand on your breast until you're done, and then you join, join your hands. So I think that's it on the hands, sign of the cross. Now I'm going to talk about the bows. And this is one area of discrepancy between this book and other books that you might find on serving. A lot of, uh, a lot of books for altar servers have only two kinds of bows, a simple bow and a profound bow. We have in this book three because it more closely mirrors what the priest does at Mass. The priest has three bows. One is a bow of the head. The other is a medium bow, which would include the head and the kind of the upper torso, the shoulders. And then the third is a profound bow, which is bowing, bending from the waist. Properly made, standing, and I'll turn sideways, a profound bow of the head would be like that. We make it the name of Jesus. The glory be to the Father. It's a profound bow of the head. The medium bow is going to look like this. And that is said at the Miseriatur for the priest's confidior. After he says his confidior, you say the Miseriatur. Also, at the end of the prayers of the foot of the altar, there are several uh, versicles and responses. And it begins with Deus tu conversus vivificabis nos. And the priest does that. So you would bow a number two bow, as I call it, a medium bow. Then the third bow, if I were standing from my waist, I would bow, that's a profound bow. And the rubrics tell us that the, the profound bow should be such that if I were to put my, knee, my fingers down, my fingertips down, they would either touch my knees or almost touch my knees. So that's a way to, to gauge making a profound bow from a standing position. Now you're going to be kneeling for the most part when you make these bows. So again, a number one bow, bow of the head, Number two bow would include the shoulders and the upper part of the torso. Number three is from the waist and a more profound bending of the body. But don't go overboard. Now, when you're, what I mean by that is when you're bowing profoundly, like for the confitier, your head should not be to the floor or to the step in front of you. So this is a profound bow for the confitier. And another thing not to do is to sit back on your heels when you're in the profound bow. You just simply bow over forward and that's another reason for not going down too far. So don't sit back onto your heels uh, and you bow forward profoundly, but not all the way to the floor or the step in front of you. Okay, so three bows and number one bow. When I say number one bow, bow of the head. Number two, in medium, kind of in between the, the bow of the head and the bow of the body. And then a number three is a more profound bow of the whole body. I already talked about genuflections, genuflecting on one knee. There is also a double genuflection. A double genuflection is made when the Blessed Sacrament is exposed and you come out into the sanctuary or you're leaving the sanctuary, you're leaving the altar, such as uh, exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. So let's say we have benediction, we have exposition, and then we're going to leave for a holy hour and then come back in later for reposition, benediction and reposition we would do a double genuflection, which is like kneeling down. You go down with the right knee again, then the left knee, and then it's the number three bow, the profound bow. And then you stand and then turn and go the direction you're going. So that's a double genuflection. Even with the Blessed Sacrament exposed, you do not do that in the midst of the ceremony, whatever it might be, benediction or mass, such as during 40 hours, uh, you would only do it when you come into the sanctuary and then when you leave, if the Blessed Sacrament is exposed. Um, I already talked about the surplus and putting it on. One of the things I want to mention regarding the surplus is I do not like short surpluses. So the sleeve should go past your elbow. So I would say between the elbow and the wrist. Obviously, you don't want it too long because it would impede the movement of your hands. So between the elbow and the wrist will be the sleeve, the le sleeve length. 
and then the length of the surplus itself should go well past the waist. It shouldn't just go down to the waist or a couple inches past the waist. It should go, it should go at least four or five inches or so past the waist, but never all the way to the knee, never past the knee or to the knee. So somewhere between the waist and the knee will be the length of your surplus. And different churches, different priests might have a different preference. But the point is it should never be so short that the sleeves don't go all the way to the elbow and that the length doesn't go past the, the waist. That would be too short.